Well, good morning to all of you. This morning for our devotion, I would like to talk to you about a muscle in the human body called the splenius capitis. And I know you're all coaches and former athletes and are very familiar with the human anatomy, but I'm not sure how much you know about the splenius capitis. And I'd like to talk to you about this muscle for I'm a little bit concerned about this muscle in uh, many people today. Uh, this muscle can be found in the back of the neck. And the purpose of this muscle is to cause extension of the head, okay? And it's a muscle that is uh, called an, a voluntary muscle, which means that we have to actively, uh, consciously activate this muscle. And it causes the head to go back like this in life. And uh, it concerns me because we see a lot of people with weak splenius capitis muscles that look a little bit like this with their heads down in life. And you don't have to look too far to find people on your campus, certainly on our campus at Concordia University, as you go through the average mall in America, the average streets, you see a lot of people walking with their heads down like this. And it saddens me to see people with their head down like this. And this is something that you and I uh, need to wrestle with a little bit in our lifetime as we uh, lead and uh, serve as uh, coaches in today's society. Uh, the opposite of this look is when people are like this, and uh, this is a much better look uh, in life, uh, to have people with their tight splenius capitis muscles and their heads up looking uh, people in the eyes and carrying themselves with a little bit more joy and a little bit more confidence. This morning, I would like to share with you how to strengthen uh, the splenius capitis muscle. And strengthening the splenius capitis muscle is as easy as A, B, C. A stands for attitude. And there's a lot that we could say today about attitude, but certainly something that we can learn from this gentleman by the name of Dr. Victor Frankl. I don't know if you've ever read his book titled Man's Search for Meaning, but I would encourage you to put that on your reading list. Victor Frankl was at home one day with his family in Germany during World War II and uh, a troop of Nazi soldiers came and ransacked the house and threw all of these uh, Frankls into concentration camps. And they all were killed except for Victor Frankl. And Victor Frankl survived and he wrote this book called Man's Search for Meaning. And in this book he describes that one day he was being interrogated under bright lights. He had been stripped naked, shaved clean, uh, clean uh, his wedding ring, everything had been taken away from him. And he realized that at that moment, that no matter what the Nazis did to him, they could not touch his attitude. His attitude or his outlook on life was his decision. And the same can be said for you and me today. Our outlook on life is our decision that we must make on a daily almost hourly, sometimes minute-by-minute minute basis. We have to wrestle with our attitude. We as leaders must be in charge of our attitudes. We can't wait for the environment to be perfect uh, before we decide to have a positive attitude. For our attitudes are contagious. I believe that with all my heart. As we live as leaders, our attitudes are contagious and our attitudes are easily ascertained by those around us. So the first part of tightening up our splenius capitis begins with our attitude, our outlook on life. We know that attitude is not genetic, and we know that attitude, Viktor Frankl shows us that attitude is not an environmental decision. It's, it's an environmental factor. It's, it's a decision that we make uh, throughout our lifetime. B stands for boldness. Boldness is synonymous with confidence carry ourselves with some confidence and some boldness and to be bold in life we it helps to experience some success success breeds success and the only uh, way to become successful in life is work 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 okay there are no shortcuts to success the only place you find success before work in life is going to be in the dictionary okay so success as we experience more success in life uh, we become more bold and we're able to hold our splenius capitis much tighter. And then C, the most important variable that I want to talk to you about today is Christ. Strengthening our splenius capitis is as easy as ABC, but C, it's Christ. Christ 
is the most important aspect in our ability to carry ourselves with a positive outlook, a positive attitude, and with confidence and boldness in life. There are many times in our lives where we would all have weak splenius capitis muscles and carry ourselves like this. We read this story, uh, this passage in the Bible, this is the story of Peter. Peter had a weak splenius capitis on this particular day after he had been cautioned by Jesus himself that before the cock crowed three times, he would deny Jesus three times. And uh, sure enough, after Peter made a mistake, he made a terrible mistake, he felt terrible. Uh, Peter, the Bible says Peter went out and wept bitterly. And so you know that his splenius capitis was weak and he was very dejected and sad and tormented. Okay, so there are times in life where all of us make mistakes. And then we read in Luke chapter 19, verse 30, a time where Jesus himself on the cross, his splenius capitis, finally he looked out and he said, it is finished. And Jesus died. Okay, and his splenius capitis was obviously weak. All right, so in times of mistake, in times of death and adversity, uh, we, all of us humans, no matter how tough we are, no matter how strong we are, no matter how confident we are, are going to wrestle with our splenius capitis. But the good news for us today is that this passage is not the final passage in the Bible. We'd all deserve to walk around like this if this was it. But we read in the next passage, next chapter in John chapter 20, we read this beautiful story. Mary was in the Garden of Gethsemane. Not the Garden of Gethsemane, the garden near where Jesus was buried uh, on that Sunday. And, she, and Mary was sitting, and she was very dejected, as you can imagine. She had just lost her Lord, Jesus, seeing the brutal murder. And the Bible says, Mary, thinking he was the gardener, Mary said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. And then this passage, ladies and gentlemen, changes everything. Jesus said to her, Mary. Jesus, had he not been able to utter that word Mary, would have meant that he was still dead. And then we're done like this. But Jesus was able to utter the word Mary. Jesus was alive. And Jesus and Mary recognized that ver voice and said she turned to him. Mary turned to him and cried out, Teacher. She recognized it was her Lord. It was Jesus. And so you can kind of imagine with the artist right here, this artist's depiction of Mary. You see Mary was very dejected, very weak, splenius capitis. Mary, and what did she do? Because she heard that word Mary, her name, the splenius capitis became tight again. And that's the beautiful message of Christianity, is that we focus our lives on Jesus who was dead. But then he rose, and because he rose, we can face anything in life. We know that Jesus is bigger than anything we face. And so we can carry ourselves with a very, very tight splenius capitis as we live our lives. I'd like to introduce you in closing to this woman. Perhaps you recognize her. This uh, woman, when she was 17 years old in 1967, dove into a lake. And she dove in head first. She thought the lake was very deep, but found out the lake was very shallow. And this girl by the name of Johnny hit her head on the bottom of the lake and broke her neck and became a quadriplegic. And in her book, her first book uh, titled Johnny, she writes about how she was laying in the hospital, very dejected, ready to give up on life, would just as soon been dead, until she realized that God was bigger than anything she faced. And she wrestled with her splenius capitis. And she taught herself how to paint pictures with uh, paintbrushes in her teeth. And my friends, Johnny Erickson today cannot move many muscles in her body except for her splenius capitis muscle. Johnny has written over 50 books in her lifetime. She has spoken in over 50 countries in the world. Uh, she's an international uh, 
obviously speaker and a widely recognized Christian uh, inspiration. And uh, Johnny Erickson teaches us that no matter how bad life gets, Mary teaches us that no matter how bad life gets, because of Jesus, we can all tighten up our splenius capitis. My friends, a tight splenius capitis is as easy as A, B, C. Attitude, boldness, and Christ. But it's all about Christ. May God be with you as you lead today. May God be with you as you wrestle with your splenius capitis and help those in your leadership, in your teams, in your schools, also learn that they can tighten up their splenius capitis every day because God is bigger than anything we ever face. Have a great day.